we're back at Springview Hospital, and uh, we're I'm joined now by to my left Kevin Croce, the radiologist here at Springview, and welcome. Thanks and for having me. To my right, Laurie Carico, the mammography tech, and thank you for joining us. Thank you. You're the person they see when they come in to have the test. Yes. And for a woman to come in, and even if she hasn't felt, you know, something to come in and it's just a routine test. This is kind of a traumatic time for women when they come in. So talk about that a little bit. Um, I really try to bring people back, and especially if it's their first mammogram, explain to them what we're going to be doing before we even get to that part. Um, I think if you sit down and explain to the patient what they're going to be going through and why we're doing it, why we have to compress, because that's a big issue for a lot of people and being nervous about coming in, is if you explain to the patient and just go through things and ask them if they have any questions. It kind of puts them at ease a little bit. When, when women come in, and, and as we you know, talked to Tim earlier, sometimes men, do they come in thinking the worst sometimes, yes, even if absolutely. there's no reason to? They do. Um, a lot of people hear horror stories from other people and how bad, you know, how painful or uncomfortable it is, but um, I'd say nine times out of ten, most of my patients walk out saying, well, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was, and I think it's very helpful if they kind of understand the process. Is there a fear that when you put them up and, and you're going to run this test and take the picture of them, in the back of the mind, is there a fear that there's already something there? Do, do you sense that out of people, or are they just coming in as a routine exam? Uh, I think some people, if they have a strong family history, it's always in the back of their mind. Um, for the most part, everybody... They m normally do just fine, but for that person who has a strong family history of breast cancer, it's, it's always in their mind. All right, we have the machine behind us, and w without one of us having the test run, can you kind of explain what they do or what you do when they come in to take the exam? So, it, or is, there, is it too complicated just to do No, uh, normally the patient for one of the pictures will stand in front here, their breast is on this plate, and this is a compression paddle that comes down and positions the breast and keeps it in place. And then I go around and take the picture and then that lets up and my picture, since we're digital, comes up on my screen over there. Um, and then, of course, we turn the machine, we turn it and do different views, but basically the patient standing here, it usually takes 10, 15 minutes. From start to from finish? From start to finish. Now, is there, a, you talked about it, some think it's painful a little bit, so does this put quite a bit of pressure or is it more just to hold the breast in place? It, it's to stabilize the breast. Um, every patient is different as far as amount of compression depending on size, um, tissue type, but the goal is to get a firm compression. That way we get a good picture. If the breast is moving at all, it's not going to be a good picture and we want to compress that tissue so that the radiologist gets a good picture. Okay, so. They came in and you took the picture. Mm -hmm. What's the next step, Kevin? Or where do they? What what happens after you've done the picture? If it's a screening mammogram, then the patient leaves. Once I'm done, the images go to Dr. Croce. Um, diagnostic mammograms are a little bit different in that diagnostic meaning the patient comes in with a problem or is possibly a callback from a screening mammogram. And in that case, when all the imaging is finished, I show those pictures to Dr. Croce and then he'll come in and talk to the patient that day so that they leave here knowing what their outcome is. So they know they came in and had it done because there was a previous problem, you because said, or un problem uncertainty, or uncertainty. Or maybe he's called back for additional views. And so they had that one done and they get the answer before they leave that day. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Uh, you know, Kevin, we, we talked to her about the way women feel when they come in and that, that fear that can be there. So the people who come back because you've ordered a new test or want to see it, that has to be somewhat of a trying moment for you sometime because I guess can you be the bearer of bad news when that happens? Absolutely. And that, I mean, that does happen. It's a stigmatizing experience for patients. It's anxiety inducing. Um, and that's why the way I approach it is treat every patient as though they're one of my family members. So how would I want to approach if it was my sister or my mother who came in here and had to be called back from a screening exam? So one of the things I try to do is to try to make the patient feel more comfortable about why we're doing what we're doing. Oh, At okay. the end of the day, the goal is to give the patient the right answer and to establish a plan for them moving forward so that we can get them answers to 
you know, what might be going on if there is a problem at okay, all. Okay, so if someone was called back, Laurie ran uh, the test, and it doesn't look good, you're the one that has to tell, are you the final person that tells the person yes, no, or do you forward it on to someone else? Now, traditionally, that's not necessarily the case. Here, though, that's the culture that we try to establish is that um, I like to take ownership of that with the patient. So um, since I'm the person who's interpreting the exam, I definitely would like to be the person to discuss these findings with the patient. So when we hear, you know, in the old days, you heard about doctors who saw patients in their office, but they also made calls to the hospital and saw the patients in the morning sometime and in the afternoon. You, you heard about bedside manner. With the information that you have to give them, that probably helps out in your case if you have a good manner that what we would call bedside manner mm -hmm. in passing that on to someone who's left or Absolutely. who's getting the result that day. Absolutely, very important. Um, if you're not on the same page emotionally with a patient um, or you're not receptive to how they're feeling about something, it can make the experience a lot worse. Of course, I guess on the other end, I, I guess I shouldn't be uh, gothic and, and always thinking you're bearer of bad news. It has to be a nice feeling when you're the bearer of good news as well. More often than not, it, it is good news because mammography is a screening exam. So that means that it's very good at casting the net to catch problems, but it doesn't necessarily always find the, it doesn't always diagnose a patient with a problem that needs to be further worked up. Most of the time we're calling patients back that get imaging studies to prove that there's nothing bad there. So more often than not, it's actually good news that so we're able I to give the patient. So I need to be a little more positive than negative. Is that, what, is that what you're telling me? It might be helpful. Okay, well, yeah. uh, at least you're the one doing the testing. I'm not, so they'd much rather you be that way. Uh, talk a little bit about your job and what you do here in, in this department, let's say, specifically. Well, uh, at its most basic uh, function, it, it is image interpretation, whether it be a mammogram in this case or other imaging x-rays or CAT scans or things like that. My job is to look and review, it, Im review images that are done and to formulate a diagnosis based on what we see on imaging. So for mammography, the goal really is one thing, it's to diagnose cancer and to diagnose it as early as possible. All right, when we talked to Tim earlier, he talked about digital and I guess for lack of a better word, film mm -hmm. pictures. Have you done both? I have. Okay, yeah. so talk about the difference and how it's made your job, I assume it's made your job a lot easier because I would assume it cuts down on the time you have to wait, but kind of talk about the comparison in the two. Yeah, they're very different. It has made my job easier. It has made the technologist's job much, much easier. So when you got right before before we go any farther, it made your job easier, which means you don't work as hard, which means you work for less. Is that right? Sounds about right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a that fair statement. Yeah. That is. I talk, <laughs> talk about the difference a little bit. Well, the, uh, the, te the, the technology is different. Um, the the film. Uh, actually, when we transitioned from film to digital, we saw that there was actually a higher uh, a callback rate because there, the digital was able to see things. It was different, number one, but number two, we were able to pick up on certain findings at an earlier uh, time and, and with a higher sensitivity than we were with film. Uh, it doesn't mean that film was bad, it's just that I think we are better now with digital. Well, I guess it's like as technology improves, it, it's a new and improved system that kind of gets to the source of the problem a little bit easier. Then. Absolutely, and we can manipulate the images now digitally. Since they are digital, we can actually fine tune the images after they've already been obtained to further enhance our sensitivity, our ability to find stuff. Okay. Well, I want to go back to you for a minute, I guess, before we close. As you said you've done this five going on six years mm -hmm. now, and if someone comes in one year and then they come back another year, do you develop a relationship, and I know you said you tried to put them at ease, but do you also develop a relationship with your patients that way? Yes, I think we do, um, and it's a small community here, so sometimes we may know the patient, but I can see people, you know, out in the community and recognize them from here, and they'll speak to me, and, you You're the know, one who ran so, the test on right. is that the, so, way, that's the kind of way it but goes? Yeah, I think we, we all develop a relationship with our patients here. Okay, and, uh, you know, again, I want to thank both of you for giving us time today, and uh, I guess keep on doing the good work you're doing here at the hospital. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For Channel 6 TV Community Focus, I'm Dennis George.